Hello and welcome again. This is the third part of the series of videos for implementing the stream cipher in Java. So in videos one and two, we already covered this first two parts. The first part was to read the string of zeros and ones and put it into a list. So we did that already. And the second part was to read the password from the uh, user and transform it into a random list of zeros and ones. So we did parts one and two. Let me go back to the picture and see what we just did already. So when we are go back here, let me scroll here. So this is this uh, stream cipher. So we already did this part here. So we asked the user to input zeros and ones and put it into a list. We did that already. And we also actually did this one. You take a password, you transform it into a random sequence of zeros and ones. Now what is left here to do? What is left is just this part. Sort. So we need to sort this sequence or this list together with this list. Now remember, it is important that this list has the same length as the one over here. Now the user controls how the length of this one is. You are the one that has to decide here how many zeros and ones you have to put in that uh, in that list. And basically, what you do is you just look at the length of this and produce as many zeros and ones as you need here from the password. And remember, we already did this one. So we are at the point where we're almost done. So we have to sort basically two lists. So that will be part number three. And once this one is done, so basically we have implemented the whole stream cipher in Java. So let's look at sort here. So I'll, I'm going to scroll down all the way down. So we did parts one and two, as I mentioned there. And the next part will be sort the lists from one and two and print the result. So let's assume the following thing. So let's assume that the list one, we have two lists created already. I'm going to call them like this, list one. And this is going to be the, uh, the list of, of zeros and ones, zeros and ones from the user. So remember, this was the list that you produce when you ask the user for the sequence of zeros and ones and we made it into a list. And again, uh, if you don't remember how that's done, you have to go back and see the first video of this series of three videos. The second list that in this case, I'm going to call it list two. This will be the random, the random list of zeros and ones from the password. So this is the list that we created using the password, which is the password here. This is a uh, type of type string. We created the second list of zeros and ones. So these two lists that you see here, list one and list two, these are already created. This is the one from the user. And this is the one list number two is the one that you created using the length of this list and together with the password there. And of course, you use the object random there. Now, the third part is, is I'm going to sort these two lists. Now, that's actually the easy part here of the program, because the only thing I have to do is go through all this list and sort element by element, because it's a bit wise operation. So how are we going to do that? One way to do it, and it's probably the easiest way, is to do a for loop. So for this thing, uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to assume already that these two lists, list one, and list two have exactly the same size and they have to have exactly the same size, the same length. So we're going to do a for loop again. So what we do is we say, okay, so we're going to do a for loop. So for, as always, same thing. It's an integer variable, initialize it at zero. And that's going to be, is going to be less than the length of one of the two lists, which is actually the same thing. So what I can do here is uh, basically, I'm going to put the, the length of the list. Okay, I'm going to lo use lowercase though, here in this case. It doesn't matter what you use here for L. So this is a lowercase L and that's a lowercase L. So to get the length of the list, if it is a list, what you do is you say uh, the name of the list, which is either list one or two, it doesn't matter because they have exactly the same length. So what you need to do here is say just uh, list one or two, it doesn't matter. And then size, parenthesis, that gets the size of that list, list number one. That's size there with E, size. 
and of course you do the increment of your variable and that will be I'm gonna basically go through all the elements of the list so how are we gonna do this what we're gonna do is we're gonna put that into a third list that I'm gonna call list 3 so list 3 it will be list 1 sort list 2 and that sort is a bitwise okay bitwise bitwise sort that is actually again also very easy once you have set up your for loop the only thing you need to do is you're gonna have to add the elements to that list here list number three so what you do is something like this you say list three because that's the one I'm adding elements so list three that add and I'm gonna add the individual zeros and ones coming from list one and list two so let's say I want the specific position of the of the element in list one in the i position so i'm going to say something like this so i'm going to say list one and to get the i element of that list you say get get the i element so basically that command there that line of code is saying from list number one get me the i element in that list i have to sort that with the same element in list two in the same position so i'm gonna write down that in a second so from list two i'm gonna get the i element and it has to be the i element because in here what i'm doing is i'm, at, I'm doing the operation sort up bitwise and what is the operation sort here in in Java? So in Java already has that sort operation, and that's just the caret symbol, just like this. And that's it. That once that for loop runs, it's gonna create or it's gonna populate the list three with the sort values of list one and list two bitwise. So that's basically what you have to do to print out the result. Now that list three will be the output of that stream cipher so after that you just have to print it out so um, i'm going to show you how this is done in in java and so this will be actually the last part the only thing you have to do is you put all these three things together the first thing is putting the input of the user into a list of zeros and ones the second step is take the password and create a list a random sequence of zeros and ones with that password and the third one will be combined list one and list two that we're creating from a step one and a step two. So I'm gonna show you how this is done in the Eclipse application. So I'm here in Eclipse and as you can see there, I had all the code written already for the uh, example that I was working on from from when I was writing. Now, before we, uh, we, we start, so remember that you have to import certain libraries to be able to work with this. Now, look at all the videos we did so far from one through three. And you have to import all those libraries to make sure that everything here is going to work. Otherwise, Eclipse is going to complain. It's going to say something is wrong. So you make sure you import those libraries. So in this particular case, as you can see up there, those are the libraries I need to import to be able to work with the list. Now, let's look at, at this code uh, line by line. So the first line of code there that you see there is the definition of list one. Yeah, that's very long. Yes, it's very long to write. The thing is, I have to write that much because I have to make up that list. Now, when you are constructing your program, list one that is here will be entered by the user. That was part of video number one in this series of three videos. So because I'm not asking the user to enter anything, I'm just going to give you an example. So the example for me will be like that. So you're going to write that piece of code there. And so basically what I'm saying here, all that piece... All that line that is there so long, basically what it's saying is I'm looking at a list that contains these elements, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. So I'm creating a list of 1. Again, when you're running your program, you don't have to do that because from video number 1, that's read from the user and you put it in a list. So I'm doing this because this is an example. Now let's go to the second line of code. The second line of code is when I create again another list. And that list, remember, is the list of random uh, zeros and ones that come from the password. 
So what am I writing this line here? Because uh, of course I have to give you an example. But this is already created once you create when you do um, view the um, second video. List two will be created for you using the password, password to number, number to seed of the random object, and the random object will generate that list for you. So list two here will be generated for you if you actually code part two of this sequence of videos. And again, because I'm giving an example, so I have to put up some zeros and ones in there. And this is the example 01101011. So as you can see there, those two lists, list one and list two, they have exactly the same number of elements. And it has to be like that. Let me repeat that again. The input from the user has a certain number of zeros and ones. The random sequence of zeros and ones that you produce from the password has to have exactly the same length as the sequence that the user entered. So I'm mimicking this right here in this in this example. And the last, of course, is because I had to define a list where to put my result, which is list number three. And as you can see, it's a little bit less code because uh, I'm not defining a list to contain anything. That list will contain the bitwise sort of those two lists. All right. So as I mentioned also in the video, what you have to do is you have to do a for loop. And as you can see, I have the for loop there, exactly as I had it uh, when I was writing. So it's a for loop, starts at zero. And i is the counter, it's going to be less than the length of that list, list number one. You can put list number two there, it doesn't matter because they're supposed to have the same length. And the way you write down length there is, remember, there's a list and then that size there and the increment of the variable i. And the next line there is the one that is going to populate my list three with the sort, the width y sort of list one and list two. And remember what I mentioned in the video is uh, the list one, the i element, you get it like this. You say list one, get i element of that list. And list two, you get the i element because this is all with bitwise, bit by bit, first bit, second bit, so on. And the carrot symbol, you see that triangle, upside triangle there, that's the sort operation in Java for bits. Now that's not a bitwise sort, it's just a bit, but because it's acting on zeros and ones, the it acts like a bitwise sort. So, so that's the for loop. And the next line that you see there, system that out that print line is gonna just print whatever that list is of of zeros and ones, the one that is sort. So, so let me run this program. So once I run it, I just basically gives me the answer. Now let's double check actually if this is actually what it's supposed to be doing. So if you look at the uh, at the list one and two, the list one and two is uh, this list right here and this other list. So what is one so one? What's one so one is one. So that's what the one that I have over here. What is zero zero so one? So again one again. So it's this one right here. Okay, what is one? Sor one that is zero, and you see there this is actually the sor bitwise of these two lists that you have right here. So that's the last step actually of the stream cipher. So what do you need to do now? What you need to do now is basically you just have to implement all the what I said in the video, video one, video two, and this video three, which is basically just copy this for loop right here and create this variable, the variable list three, and so that's that's how you're gonna. Um, um, implement the stream uh, cipher in Java. As I mentioned early in the beginning of the video, these are recommendations. If you find another way to do this easier, then please by all means do it. But of course, the program is 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 the program that you write. Whatever you write is supposed to do whatever the stream cipher is doing, which is you enter a sequence of zeros and ones. The user enters a password. And the program is going to create a random sequence of zeros and ones from the password to sort it with the sequence of zeros and ones that the user entered. As long as you program does that, you're okay. Again, these are your recommendations. If you think this is too complicated for you, then you can maybe find some other way to do it, maybe easier. For me, this is actually not that bad. It's easy to implement, and I'm actually giving you all the code here. So this is the last part of the video. So I'm going to stop there. So um, in the next video, we can actually talk about 
another kind of cipher, which is also very important in modern cryptography. So I'll see you in the next video.